Hey everybody, I'm Afefe with Touch by Tarot. Glad to see you. If you're new to my channel, I'm an intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot and oracles. And if you are a regular, thank you so much. You know how I feel about you. I really appreciate your support. I wanted to close out this year with a reading on, um, not a reading, but more of a discussion on spiritual gifts. I have been doing so many readings for people lately, uh, thanks to so many of you who took advantage of my end of year closeout discount special. And uh, so my book has been extremely busy for the last, you know, three, four weeks. And I'm happy about that. Been delighted to meet so many of you uh, face to face on Zoom. So anyway, but I've noticed one thing that comes up, one question that is so common um, is, you know, your spiritual gifts and how to know what they are, how to get comfortable with them, how to build on them, how to, uh, how to trust yourself basically. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. And, and so that is, you know, many of us, myself included, I'm always learning and growing. That's the name of the game here on earth, right? We never stop. We should never stop. Uh, so for many of you, I want you to think about as you're going into 2024, exploring your gifts, building them, you know, just really preparing yourself for life, especially in these challenging times, right? We have to do it. We have to stay strong. And our psychic gifts, our spiritual gifts, you know, combine with that physical reality to help us get the optimal outcome, okay? So a couple of areas I want you to think about. When you are feeling that thing, you know, and you know it's spirit, you know there's something more to you, you know that something brings you alive. Maybe it's when you watch YouTube videos or you're reading a book or you're watching a movie or whatever it is, but it has that spiritual component to it and there's that part of you that kind of lights up and says, you know what, I'm feeling that. I think that's a part of me. Think about these four areas that, that spirit gave me to share with you that, you know, you can begin to identify what they are and then how you are drawn to them and things that you can do in other words instead of just feeling because a lot of people get overwhelmed you know you watch various videos you follow various people instagram youtube so other forms of social media and so there's a little of this and a little of that and a little of this and then it makes you sometimes you know enjoy all of it but when it comes to your own practice and you're undeciding what your own strengths are and your own path it can be a little intimidating all right so let's break it down i'm going to do this just like i do when i'm teaching tarot i break it down into pieces so here's the four areas i want you to think about that spirit gave me the guides gave me this morning one psychic two a healer three a shaman or four a sage okay so we have psychic healer, shaman, or sage. Talk a little bit about those four. And there is crossover. You can be, I am a healer. I'm a tarot reader, but I am a healer, meaning I am someone who has studied and continues to study healing modalities, especially in teas and herbs and crystals and, you know, and other baths and other forms of natural healing okay so and and i've had quite a bit of success with it so but in at still you know me the cards are my jam you know oracle and tarot cards are my jam so i'm saying that you can mix you know you may have you may find yourself led to all four areas of expertise you know in all four areas of spiritual study nothing wrong with that but unless you take time to identify them and explore them as something distinct then you can continue to you know sometimes risk being confused or or just sort of mucking up the energy all right so let's go for if your if your area uh, that you feel called to is more in in the area of psychic realm are you psychic of course all of us have psychic capabilities all of us were born with a sense of intuition and a sense of greater knowing of a different connection right we talk about the clairs and that's a whole segment unto itself i know many of you know about that you've taken workshops on that but but with the psychic um if you're leaning more into the psychic arts the clairs are going to be something that you notice you're really drawn to and that are activated within you claircognizance clairvoyance clairaudience hearing claircognizance uh what you know aware of clairvoyant what you see and i want to talk about that in particular with um psychics to me that is a distinction 
psychics are able to see and very often it's psychic slash medium medium meaning being able to connect with uh the departed the other side those who have transitions and bring back messages or carry messages between the living and the departed but in in the psychic field it is really about what you see that perhaps others don't see or perhaps can feel a little unexplainable you see it uh, very often it is about being predictive where you can see events playing out in the future and it could be by see it could be that spirit your spirit guides give you an actual visual of how something is going to be carried out or you can see how someone is living or where they're living you know down the road or their state of being down the road but it, it involves very much that's why you'll very often hear psychic sight right so think about that if you feel that you have been seeing um into the future in particular okay you can also and that's not to rule out that you can see things that have happened and transpired in the past but very often when people are using their psychic gifts it is um it is for predictive purposes recognizing as well that energy can always change if uh, a psychic can predict something but if the person um who is involved in that winds up you know doing whatever changing their life in some drastic way then of course the energy that was at that time could shift and it won't things won't play out exactly the same but think about that if you're really drawn to the clairs and the gift of seeing and the gift of predicting all right second thing healer i mentioned myself as a healer healing very often oh and i wanted i also a uh, spirit gave me the elements to to tie to these things so for psychic gifts very drawn to air because air is that dynamic of transmission. It is that dynamic of being quick, um, being mercurial, uh, being, being um, moving quickly, you know, thinking about weather systems and things like that on air. So moving on to the healer, you may be called to the healing arts. Uh, this is water because very often with healing, it involves that um, many people who are empaths, are drawn to healing because the idea is you know you are someone who naturally feels other people's pain discomfort when they're out of balance or out of alignment you can tell that about yourself even perhaps and so as a healer you're drawn to again all of these gifts utilizing your spiritual gifts is about listening to what you're drawn to what lights up your soul what you know, an area that you could just study and do and be involved in and hours go by and you don't even realize the time has passed, all right? So pay attention to what lights you up. That is a signal to what you're called toward. So with healing, you're called toward, you may feel yourself called toward doing something to, to help alleviate a problem, right? Whether it's a physical ailment, a spiritual ailment, a psychic ailment, etc or just energy in a room many, many people you know reiki masters are are healers um you know or do a form of healing it's energy transmission but it is a form of healing but the idea is you know with the healing arts you will find yourself very much you know uh for those who are caregivers for those who are social workers even um Again, I said empaths before, and those who generally, if you find yourself having heightened feelings or heightened emotions, sometimes it can be tough because especially for empaths, how well you know, you can absorb someone's energy, perhaps even an illness or, or you know, misalignment to the point that you feel impacted and affected by it. And that's a whole other realm of study in terms of dis having the discipline to use your gift without letting it drain you or without letting yourself be you know impacted uh to your detriment so there are ways to do that of course everything you practice you know there are ways to make sure th they just gave me the image of a surgeon you know what do they do they've got their gown on their mask their gloves so that they're not in direct contact with anything that could potentially harm them right so there are ways to do that in all disciplines but but we'll talk about that in, in another uh, taping. So healing, if you're feeling and thinking about that, that uh, uh, cups or cups in tarot, but water. Uh, third one, a shaman. Shamanism is really, really growing, you all. Uh, I am certainly attracted to it. I am doing some studies. I'm even considering like going full on and perhaps uh, doing some certification there. We'll see how spirit leads me, but... 
shamanism, you know, I've definitely participated in some ceremonies. I've done a great deal of study and, and I've talked to so many of you that is becoming an increasing, um, an increased area of, you know, people really enjoying that getting, getting, um, you know, feeling called because with shamanism, it is, I related it to, um, fire, fire being a very, very, uh, active spiritual element, right? And with shamanism, there is that connection to journeying. There is that connection similar to psychic, but it's more about um, where you can see things. But because the point is you put yourself, you go into a state, you go through ceremony, you, you do things in order to be able to access the guides, to access the other realm, to access um, another realm where you can meet your guides, where you can meet your power animals, where you can understand plant medicine. Very often people will do shamanic journeying because it, within that journey, they are shown how to use herbs and plants and where to go in the earth to find these things to help, you know, create medicines. So for shamanism, it's an active form of you know, actually learning ceremonies, doing ceremonial things that open up a portal to another realm where you can journey to and get information and and build on your skills um, in order to come back and create the medicines to work with your power animals, to work with your guides, and certainly to help your fellow man, okay? Uh and I called it the middle realm, and, and that's just how spirit gave it to me. So in other words, you have the, the universe, the cosmos, we have this earthly plane, and, and shamanism sometimes can take you right in the middle where you're able to access the cosmos, but also in touch with the earthly realm. And within that middle realm is where you are given the information, you're given the revelations, you're given the, you know, the awake dreaming state, all right? And it is all because you are creating medicine. And in all of these realms, really spiritual, spiritual gifts in general, you are creating your own medicine. And when I say medicine, I'm talking about what makes you well and I, or and others well and the world well and energy, shifting energy to make it better. Finally, sage with, with sage is sages. You know, many people are drawn to spirituality from a philosophical standpoint, from a knowledge base. They are, um, many of you have that gift of study. You are able to, to absorb information, retain it, and then use it at a later time to relate to something that someone is going on. So there is something to be said for the, the body of knowledge, spiritual knowledge that is out there. It is vast. Whether for many of us, you may have come from uh, a traditional religious background or spiritual background where there was, you know, church involved. And then you pull out of that because perhaps that wasn't everything. You felt like there was something more. And then many of you are drawn to magic and spiritual arts, ceremony, ritual, um, things that put you more in connection with the earth. You think about pagan practices, etc. So there's that, but you didn't lose what you learned in the church. You didn't forget it. You, you knew what you knew and you experienced what you experienced, but you bring some of that into the practices that you, that you decide to pursue in the future. I want to say this as well. Um, I have talked to many people who have expressed a, a certain degree of fear or, um, yeah, fear or, or concern about being judged or perhaps doing the wrong thing spiritually, especially if you've had a very strong church or Christian background, because, you know, there's such um, an emphasis placed on this is the way to go. And if you do anything else besides this, you risk, you know, worst case scenario, damnation, whatever, however you define that. But basically it's, it's, you, no one wants to, if you believe, if you have faith, if you're out here, you're trying to do the right thing. No one wants to think that ultimately they are, you know, pissing off <laughs> the highest source. You know, you want to, you want to feel like whatever you're doing in the path you're walking, that it's good. You know, you're, you're, you're supposed to do it. 
So I think some of these things, and what's beautiful is that so many people now are giving themselves permission to understand um, and to pursue and to be enlightened. And that takes me back to the sage because people who are called to be more, you know, take uh, wisdom teachers and, and to hold the wisdom and impart the knowledge. Many people who write the books and, and, you know, and really encapsulate um, the body of knowledge around spirituality, around, you know, whether it's tarot, meditation, you know, and also culturally understanding the blend of cultures, whether it's Hindu, Christian, you know, um, Far East, however, however it works, paganism, etc. But but it's bringing those things together, and and the, with a sage, it's someone who understands how these things connect, and then can use that wisdom to use that knowledge to impart wisdom to to a greater whole, and and be able to synthesize information um, in a way that that you know kind of put it all through a sieve. And so that when when the time comes, especially in ceremony, you know, in a lot of our older traditions, there were griots or, you know, storytellers and those who used words and used um, the ability to just impart information as medicine. All of it is medicine, you all. All of it leads back to medicine. All right. So I'm going to I wanted to keep this short. I'm going to close it out. And I'm also going to tell you. As you go into 2024 and you, you know, you really do pursue what these areas are and what you're called to and really open up your heart first and foremost, open up your heart, open up your mind, you know, pay attention to your intuition, pay attention to what moves you. That's the key. What moves you? What really gets you going? And then give yourself permission. You don't, it doesn't all have to be snap of a finger overnight. It doesn't even work that way. I'm here to tell you, and I think I speak for many spiritual workers who will tell you it's, it's a journey. It is lifelong. It is a journey. It's not like presto changeo, but it, it gets rich. You know, it's almost like making a recipe and every, every spice that you put into it, you know, it just enlivens it and, and makes it even more special. So going to close out with something I suggest when you are watching a movie, reading a book, meditating, however it is you get into your spiritual space, get yourself an oil, some form of an anointing oil. You can use olive oil or coconut oil if it doesn't have to be spiritual woo woo. Um, but, but spiritual woo woo is good. You know, I'm always going to go that route. All right. But here's something that I recommend you do. And I actually, this is, uh, I have a, some herbs in there and you can't see it, but I also have a, a clear crystal quartz in there because quartz amplifies, right? Quartz amplifies whatever it's near. So with these herbs and these, these magical oils I have in here, I also put a, a clear quartz crystal in there to amp it up even more. All right. So something I recommend when you are preparing yourself to, you know, go into your spiritual space because you're, you're getting more insight and, and growing. Take your oil and there's three spots you're going to hit. All right. You're going to always, always, always get that third eye, right? Talking about that intuition. So you're going to just do a little dab on your third eye. Then you're going to hit your crown, right? Where the information comes in, where you open up your portal to spirit. There's your crown. Here's what you see. Here's your connection. And here never forget this one at the back at the base of the skull near that pituitary that's your protection that is your protection get that all right what you see the portal and protection those three areas all the time and in fact you probably should do, you know do it daily whether you're in your spiritual space or not all right okay you all have a great one happy holidays uh i will be um traveling during the the um, for my birthday, Christmas and New Year's. So I'll get on here bit, you know, bit by bit. Maybe I'll do some shorts, but I wish you the absolute best. Continue to grow, continue to trust your gifts, continue to ask the questions because there are answers. I saw this quote recently. I'll close out with this. Uh, it's Zora Neale Hurston, right? And she had a great quote and it said, there are years that ask questions and there are years that answer. 2024 is going to be a year that's going to answer a lot of questions for you all. All right, let's take the journey together. I'll talk to you real soon. Be safe.